Creating Exponential Functions Part 2. In Creating Exponential Functions Part 1, we constructed exponential functions from a rate of growth or rate of decline. We used the graphing calculator to evaluate each function. In Creating Exponential Functions Part 2, we will create functions that are more complex from given data. We will use the exponential regression feature, StatCalc0, to determine each function. Then we will learn how to paste the calculated function into the function editor, y equals, and evaluate using the created function. Our first problem, Jeremiah has a money market account that earns 5% interest per year. If the prorated interest is recognized after every month, what will be the amount of the original $1,250 he invested after 17 months? Because we're going to the middle of a time period, we must find a function that will give us the amount after each month. And this is how we're going to do it. We're going to go to stat, enter, and at time zero, Jeremiah had $1,250, and this reflects it. Now, how many months later is one year? Well, it's going to be 12 months later, so we put in 12. And how much is that amount going to be? Well, it's going to be... $1,250 times a factor of 1.05. We got that 1.05 by taking 100%, adding the 5% for 105 total, then we convert to a factor by dividing that 105 by 100. And so we just put it in here like this and it will calculate it for us. And here we have $1,312.50 after 12 months. Now we find the function by going to stat calc 0 press enter twice and there is our function we're going to put it into our y equals and before that we notice that our coefficient is 1250 which means that's our starting amount now we go to y equals we put in we go to five statistics arrow twice to the right to EQ and there it is now we can go to second table and we can go down to 17 months because that's what we're interested in and we see that after 70, 17 months we have 1,000 or Jeremiah will have $1,339.50 and so that's going to be rounded off under closer inspection $1,339.46 rounded to the nearest penny. Another application, half-life. A sample of cloth is taken from an Egyptian pyramid that was built 2,500 years ago. What percentage of the original carbon-14 remains? And carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,730 years. Now, what we do is we can go to stat edit, and here we see at z time equals zero, there was 100% input of zero, 100% carbon-14 remaining. After 5,730 years, 50% is remaining. So that will be the basis, those two points, for our exponential relationship. And we determine what the function is by going to stat calc 0. We press enter twice, and there is our function. Now we're going to paste it into our function editor by pressing y equals, then vars, then five statistics, arrow twice to the right for EQ, and there it is. Now we can go to second, graph, and we can just scroll till we get to 2500 and get our answer, but how long is that going to take? No, you don't have time for that because there's a shortcut. Instead of taking those several minutes to get there, we can get there faster by going to sec second and then to window and we change table start from 102 in this case to 2500 and now we can go to second graph and we see that after 2500 years there's going to be 73.903 percent of the original carbon-14 remaining. Now here's a related problem. An organic sample from human remains is measured with a Geiger counter to have 30.3 percent of the original carbon-14. How long ago did this person live? Well, 
we can we still have our equation in our function editor and we're going to put in y2 30.3 for 30.3 percent now this is our standard window uh, these are our standard window dimensions we're going to need to change them to be able to see the graph to find the intersection point so I set x min to zero years time equals zero x max 50,000 which means 50,000 years and our x scale is 10,000 so every mark on the x axis will account for 10,000 years. Now for the y scale we start at y equals 0, y min which is percentage, y max is 100, 100% and y scale at 10. We graph these amounts and we see our intersection point and it looks to be roughly above that first tick on the x-axis to the right of the origin and as I recall I think that x scale was 10 Thousand. So it's going to be roughly 10,000 years. We can find out exactly what it is by going to second, trace, five, scroll down to five, enter, enter, enter. And we see that it is close to 10,000, 9,871 years ago. Now for our musical application, musical pitches are defined as 220 hertz or cycles per second for A below middle C. One octave or 12 half steps higher, the frequency doubles to 440 hertz. What is the frequency of G below middle C? And that would be two half steps below A below middle C. And so we're going to find our relationship by going to stat edit and putting at point zero, which would be A below middle C, we have 220 cycles per second. And then our second point is 12 half steps higher, we have an output value of 440 hertz. So those are our two points, and we find the relationship by going to stat, calc, zero, enter twice, and there we have it. We're going to put that in y equals by going back to y equals and going down to vars, then five statistics, go twice to the right, to eq, press enter, and this is our function. Now we evaluate by going second graph, it gets to our table view, and we're interested in going from a below middle c down two half steps so we need to scroll down to x equals negative 2 and we see that x equals negative 2 we have an output frequency or cycles per second of 196 hertz and we see if at finer view it rounds off pretty evenly to 196 and I have a tone generator on my computer and I can find out exactly what that tone is and hear it and here I'm going to do it I go to put a frequency of 196 Hertz press OK it makes this sound that's going to be G below middle C now summarize first we need to place two points from the exponential formation and press stat calc 0 then enter twice to get the exponential function it's a lot easier if we paste the function into y equals by going to y equals and then vars 5 arrow twice to the right to eq then press enter then we can use the table view to evaluate for the input value we want we can also use graph to find the input value needed to find a particular output value thanks for visiting i hope this lesson has been enjoyable value needed to find a particular output value. Thanks for visiting. I hope this lesson has been enjoyable.